15 minute or less lecture series, Human Anatomy, Chapter 26, The Reproductive System, Part 2. So the female re reproductive system has a variety of functions. This includes within the ovaries where oocytes are produced and also female hormones are secreted. These are in tubes that transport the secondary oocyte to the uterus and is often the site of fertilization. The uterus, which provides a site for the ovum to implant and for the fetus to develop and also begins the whole labor process to push the uh, infant out. Uh, vagina, which receives the penis, is in the passageway for childbirth, and then the mammary glands, which synthesize, secrete, and eject milk for the newborn. The ovaries. The ovaries are found in the uh, pelvic cavity. They are somewhat uh, almond-shaped structures. They are held in place by three ligaments. The broad ligament, which is a sheet-like fold of the peritoneum. The ovarian ligament, which attaches the ovary to the uterus. And the sphincteric ligament, which attaches the ovary to the pelvic wall. Um, if you look at a cross-section of the ovary, you see that it has a layer of simple epithelium all the way around the outside. That is the germinal epithelium. Below that is a layer of connective tissue called the tunica albuginea. And then the center area of the ovary is the ovarian medulla, um, which is a loosely arranged connective tissue area where you find lots of blood vessels, nerves, uh, lymph ducts, etc. Uh, the ovary also has a hilum, an open area, where the blood vessels are coming in and out and so forth. And then finally, you have the outer area, the cortex of the ovary, ovarian cortex. This is made up of dental connective tissue, houses the ovarian follicles, and the stromal cells which take care of the oocytes. So the ovarian follicles, each follicle possesses a single oocyte, plus a number of cells surrounding that oocyte to take care of the oocyte. So, down here are the primordial uh, follicles. These are the primary follicles. Here's the secondary follicle. This here is the mature follicle. The mature follicle has a large food filled chamber and possesses the secondary uh, oocyte, which it will release via ovulation. And when the secondary oocyte is released, it will also be surrounded by cells. Uh, what remains of the uh, mature follicle is basically the corpus hemorrhagicum, which then becomes the corpus luteum. Corpus luteum remains for a couple of weeks and produces various hormones, waiting to see if the oocyte that was released will become fertilized. And then finally, that will eventually break down to the corpus albicans, which is basically a tiny scar tissue remnant. All right, so the primordial follicles have 46 chromosomes in them. They have not really gone through meiosis yet in the form of oogenesis. They're just at the beginning of it. They were produced when the female was an embryo and are waiting in stasis until puberty. Um, the primary follicles will then have the cells continue to divide and grow and become a multi-layered structure. So we have a larger follicle with the granulosa cells surrounding the oocyte. Again, we are still at 46 chromosomes and this begins in uh, puberty. Uh, then we have the secondary follicle, which is a continued growth of the follicular structure. There will be more and more granulosa cells surrounding the oocyte. There will be a uh, fluid-filled chamber starting to form, filled with follicular fluid. Uh, finally, it will reach the size of the mature follicle. Again, many, many uh, granulosa cells surrounding the oocyte. The primary oocyte has now gone through a cell division, so that it now has 23 chromosomes. There was also a polar body formed, which had very little cytoplasm and its own 23 chromosomes, but the polar body is basically discarded. So we only have one cell that survives the very, very large oocyte. In the primary follicle, we have a very large fluid filled um, antrum as well. Uh, during ovulation, the uh, oocyte with the cells uh, surrounding it will enter the abdominal cavity surrounding the secondary oocyte is called the corona radiata. Um, this uh, oocyte with cells surrounding it will be swept into the uterine tube to be carried to the uh, uterus. However, again, meiosis has not been completed yet. We still need another second, a second cell division to occur. Um, during post-ovulation, if and only if the oocyte is fertilized with a sperm, then it will go under that second cell division, producing the large uh, final oocyte that has 23 chromosomes, another polar body, which will be discarded, and then 
these sperms DNA and the secondary oocytes DNA will come together to form the four or six chromosomes of the new organism in a fertilized egg cell known as a zygote. So during the fetal period, we get the initial formation of the many, many primordial follicles with their um, primary oocytes. That still has 46 chromosomes. During childhood, nothing happens. Puberty starts, and then once every month or so, a uh, primordial uh, oocyte uh, uh, follicle will become a uh, primary follicle, and then a secondary follicle. And then when it becomes a mature follicle, we will get meiosis starting up again get a cell division with the polar body that's discarded and the secondary oocyte, very, very large with most of the cytoplasm and its 23 chromosomes. Ovulation will occur, and then if and only if fertilization occurs, will meiosis complete with that second cell division and a second polar body being discarded. All right, so the oocyte ends up in the uterine tubes. The uterine tubes start off with a funnel-shaped region called the infundibulum. Um, it is open to the peritoneal cavity and not directly attached to the ovary. Coming off of the infundibulum are these sort of fingery-like structures called the fimbri. The fimbri and the inner lining of the uterine tube are all covered with cilia. They gently beat to help draw the oocyte into the uterine tube and carry it along the uterine tube to the uterus. The, after the infundibulum, we have a wider area of the uterine tube, which is the ampulla of the uterine tube, and then it gets a little narrower. This is the isthmus of the uterine tube, and then it opens up into the uh, uteral, uh, uterine cavity. Um, again, uh, fertilization usually occurs in the uterine tube, and it takes days for the oocyte to travel from the beginning of the uterine tube to the uterus itself. Parts of the uterus. Well, the uterus is a muscular organ shaped kind of like a pear. Here's a large area of muscle tissue at its top or hump, which is called the fundus, very muscular. Then you have the body, which tapers down. The body includes the uterine cavity, where the embryo can embed and develop. There's a slight constriction called the isthmus, and then you have the cervix. The cervix is the inferior portion of the uterus that opens up into the uh, vaginal space and actually pushes into the vaginal space slightly. Uh, the uterine is held in position by several ligaments, including the broad ligament, which helps to attach the uterus to either side of the pelvic cavity. The uteral sacral ligament is connected to the sacrum, the cardinal ligaments that extend to the pelvic wall, and the round ligaments that extend to the labia majora of the external genitalia. So again, lots of ligaments holding the uterus in place because its location needs to be um, stationary. Uh, some possible uh, issues that can develop. Uh, you have ovarian cysts. This is when a fluid-filled compartment fills up and forms on the ovary and gets larger and larger. This is non-cancerous, but it can lead to pain and bleeding. Uh, there's also proline prolapse, where the uh, uterus pushes forward further into the vaginal space, and in some cases, all the way out of the vagina. Uh, this is a failure of the ligaments to hold the uterus in place properly. All right, the uterus has three layers of tissue. The outermost layer is the peritoneum, made up of uh, areolar connective tissue and attached with, continuous with the broad ligament. Uh, the second layer is the myometrium. Myometrium is the thickest layer of the uterus, and it holds Three layers of smooth muscle tissue, very important for contractions during childbirth. And then the innermost layer is the endometrium. The endometrium lines the uterine cavity. It has two layers, sternum functionalis, which sloughs off during menstruation, and sternum basalis, which is a permanent layer which will reform the sternum functionalis. Uh, there are lots of blood vessels that provide um, blood to the uterus and also in anticipation of a pregnancy. You have the uterine artery, which arrives, splits into the arcuate arteries, which go into the uterus's walls, which then become the radial arteries, going deeper and deeper into the uterus, until finally it branches into the straight arterioles, found in the stratum bacillus, and the spire arterioles, which go into the stratum functionalis when it's present. Cervical cancer is a type of cancer that women can develop. It is thought to be caused in many cases, but not all cases, by the virus HPV, the papilloma virus. Um, cervical cancer usually starts off with cervical dysplasia, where the cells in the cervix are growing weirdly, have strange shapes. There's too many of them. Um, a pap test is taken to try to detect cervical dysplasia and also cervical cancer early on, so it can be treated. Nowadays, there's a virus for the uh, vaccine for the virus, which has actually decreased the amount of cervical cancer events in the United States. The vagina is a tubular fibromuscular 
canal. It has its fornix, which is a little bit of space that is around the cervix. It's pushing into the vagina slightly. The vagina has many, many ridges, ridges called the rugi. Uh, at the end of the vagina, um, in many uh, girls and some women, is a thin folds of the mucosal layer, which have grown out slightly, partially covering up the vaginal orifice. Then we have the vulva. The vulva are the ex female external genitalia, the external structures of the female reproductive system. This includes the mons pubis, which is a mound of adipose tissue, fatty tissue, in front of the pubic bone. Uh, the labia majora, which are the outer folds, the thicker outer folds, which have pubic hair on them. And then the inner labia minora, the inner folds, which are very thin, pinkish in color, have no pubic hair or fat, but plenty of blood vessels and capillaries. The space between the labia minora is the vestibule. That's that space where you'll find the uh, urethral orifice and the vaginal orifice. The previous of the clitoris is where the labia minora fold over the top of the clitoris. And the clitoris itself is a small erectile tissue that is very sensitive. And if you compare it to male anatomy, it would be the uh, equivalent of the penis. The external urethral opening is present in the vestibule as well as the vaginal orifice. Um, and some ducts for several glands, which release mucus like secretions during um, arousal. Uh, deep underneath the uh, external genitalia, you'll find some elongated erectile tissue on either side of the vaginal orifice, and they do indeed expand during um, erection of the female genitalia and basically stimulation. All right, moving on to the breasts. The breasts are uh, large structures, part of the integumentary system technically, but also reproductive system. You have the nipple, this projection that sticks out and holds uh, the spaces, the openings for the lactiferous ducts so that milk can merge through the nipple. Surrounding the nipple is this circular pigmented skin called the are areola. Uh, within the breast, you have a lot of adipose tissue or fatty tissue. You have many suspensory ligaments that help to hold the breast structure together and give it its overall shape. Uh, within the breast, you also have the mammillary glands, which is made up of many, many lobes. These lobes become smaller lobules, which eventually become the alveoli. The alveoli are the structures that produce the milk, produce and secrete the milk. Uh, that milk will go uh, down lactiferous ducts to the lactiferous sinus, where a tiny, tiny amount of milk could be held temporarily. But really, the uh, mammillary glands are not meant to store milk Instead, uh, most milk is secreted as the infant suckles. Breast cancer, second leading cause of death from cancer in women, uh, usually occurs in older women. Uh, often, a certain age, one of the to take uh, get a mammogram every once in a while, every once or twi twice, or one every year or every two years or something like that. It is basically an X-ray machine that is using very, very sensitive X-ray film to detect the denser mass of cancer compared to the rest of the uh, breast tissue. Uh, there are many, many different treatments can occur, a lumpectomy, radiation therapy, uh, chemotherapy. But in the most extreme cases, a woman may have a radical mastectomy, which is the removal of the breast, as well as any underlying pectoral muscles and axillary or lymph nodes. Um, there are various hormones used in the female reproductive cycle. Uh, it all starts with the hypothalamus, which secretes stimulating hormones that cause the release of the uh, follicle stimulating hormones and luteinizing hormones from the anterior pituitary gland. These can stimulate the development of follicles. Follicle stimulating hormones causes follicles to stimulate, the primary, primordial become primary, and so on. These uh, follicles also release estrogens, and then luteinizing hormone triggers uh, ovulation and then helps keep the corpus luteum alive within the ovary and the corpus luteum produces progesterone and estrogens. These oestrogens will then, if there's no estrogen present, then you get menstruation of the uterine lining. But then when estrogens are present, it causes regrowth of the uterine lining. And then when progesterone and estrogens are present, you get the secretory phase where the uterus becomes ready for implantation. And this process must be tightly coordinated between the brain the anterior pituitary gland, the ovaries, and the uterus, because we want the oocyte, when it arrives, to have a uterus ready to uh, for implantation. Again, uh, follicle stimulating stage, pre-ovulatory phase, where estrogen is being released, uh, ovulation, when the nitrogen is released, and then post-ovulatory phase, and then it gets degrades over time. 